I think a post-release downloadable content in Mass Effect is definitely something that's very important um, to Bioware, and it's true on all of our products, but Mass Effect is just, it's just like, it's, like I said earlier, it's this big toy box. It's like this enormous galaxy with uh, you know, millions of stars and planets to explore, and, and we can select out the interesting ones and develop them out and continue the storyline as we did with the Batarian race and bring down the sky. So I think from a, a, a franchise perspective, it's going to help to fill in the gaps and understanding and continue certain plot lines and develop out certain types of gameplay. And really, we'll try and customize it and build different types of post-release downloadable content to suit different play patterns, to suit different types of players. And in the end, it's all about making a great, fun experience for our audience. Through the, the first story and, and uh, things like Bring Down Sky, um, we want to make sure that there's there's always content out there for them to be able to play through so that uh, you know it kind of leads into Mass Effect 2 and in particular we, we kind of um, have some exciting things that we want to do in terms of the story and how the story through downloadable content is going to set up the sequel. Things we're working on right now for the Mass Effect universe next is the uh, we had something in Mass Effect 1 that again we were we weren't able to pull off just because we didn't have the time and we didn't we didn't think we'd be able to do it well enough, which was a fight club or an arena. Um, so we're actually working on that for our next uh, downloadable content piece, and we're hoping it'll be really special. So we wanted to be able to give people uh, a much more combat-oriented, a little bit lighter story kind of experience. You're going to go to kind of a casino gaming fight club space station. Any save game that you make uh, from Mass Effect 1 um, you, sh you should be able to carry that same character into Mass Effect 2. Uh, so if you if you do the, the Fight Club and, and you make your save, you finish Mass Effect 1, you'll be able to take uh, that that save game and, and create a, a character so that you can continue that experience into Mass Effect 2. So in the second game, you're, you're actually going to go through uh, a darker period where um, you're really looking for answers. It's, it's, it's a lot harder to find what the realities are and there's, there are a lot of uh, twists and turns, and it's generally a much darker experience. Well, I think what we want to do with Mass Effect is look at universal themes, you know, themes that, that apply to somebody, you know, in the future, in the past, in our present contemporary themes. So, you know, as, as we've explored in Mass Effect 1, we had things like, you know, love, lost, consequences, choice, um, does the end justify their means, morality in a, a, a general sense like that. We're obviously going to continue with those kinds of themes. We are going to continue to push forward on, on other themes like, um, you know, technology. Uh, what does it mean to be alive? How does synthetic life or artificial intelligence compare to, you know, true life or, or organic life? Um, you know, how do you cross those boundaries? Can you cross those boundaries? Should we cross those boundaries? Um, you know, we really want to sort of push into that direction. Things that, you know, people are already starting to think about and, and imagine in our world, and we just want to take those kernels of of exploration and push them forward, extrapolate them into our vision of what may come down the road. We've been very conscious of the ability of players to make choices and we understand that if those choices don't have consequences that carry on through the trilogy, there was no point in making them. Now that obviously has painted us into a difficult position because we have multiple threads, multiple endings, um, certain characters may or may not be alive. It's created extra work for us, but we felt it was necessary to, to really capture what we were going for with Mass Effect. So the short answer of how we're going to deal with all those decisions in Mass Effect 2 and going forward is that we're creating alternate versions of, of all sorts of scenarios. Um, we're almost creating, you know, I hate to say two full games, but we are definitely creating more content than what a person will see on one playthrough. Um, if you play through the, the game, uh, with a save game from the first Mass Effect, and then you make another save game uh, where you had made different choices and play through again, or you talk to a friend who's played and they had made different choices in Mass Effect 1, there'll be significant differences that you'll be saying, wow, how did that happen? Uh, you know, that guy was dead in my game. And they'll say, well, no, he's not dead in my game, and boy, he sure had an impact. You're gonna see Captain Anderson again. You're gonna see uh, Udina again. Um, a lot of the main characters that were a big part of the story in, in Mass Effect 1. And that's a lot of the fun of an ongoing story is that these characters, it's a, it's a character story. So you'll see these characters throughout the trilogy as long as they don't uh, die because of you. <laughs>